I was waiting to get there Because I honestly think if I look back those episodes in the snow They were the worst as in I Just seeing that just knowing how cold they were how long they were there It was just those episodes were so insane to me It is best known this it is the old Jack Woods. It is the woods. Oh. And now there ain't no snow. Oh. We can get a better idea. They just went back there. That's okay. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, this is definitely the area. This yeah. is definitely the town of Fort Lee, right over there. Wait, the that was big, and the other one. Big Sometimes big the big subtitles big. Yeah, they cover the names. It's really annoying. We had our foxholes right over here. And the other area, we lost Muck and Pinkella over on this side. They were killed instantly. Show them. They wrecked it. They came right home. To me, it brings a lot of memories. Memories of the men, the times, good and bad. A lot of memories. I think it's so cool that they went back there. Did they like really do it for this documentary? A real cold night. We go to bed now. My wife will tell you. This. I really recognize some of the interviews because we've seen them in the show, and of course because I edited the episode after that, I've heard it like ten times at least. We didn't have enough ammunition. We didn't have enough warm clothes, but we had confidence that our higher military authorities would get to us whatever we needed. Got on the trucks and left for Bastogne and didn't have a rifle. What are you doing without a rifle then? Oh, or like what are you going to do without a rifle? I meant. And trees, even without weapons, without equipment. They were, some of them were terrified. And they're going to kill everybody. They're running over everybody. They couldn't believe when they saw us up there to set up defensive lines and to stop the Germans. They, they said they couldn't be stopped. Snow, cold. Oh, that's cool. Rock. Yeah. Transport or whatever you want to call it. This, this footage is making well, me feel no. old. Germans knew right where we were, and they really gave us a show acting. You can always dig a hole and get out of sight, you know. We dug plenty of those. You'd be surprised how quick you can get through that hard ground when somebody's shooting at you and them shells will fall. Now you can make fast work of it. I always say we came experts on foreign European soil. <laughs> we dug in. In the ground is frozen, it takes quite a while. You just yeah. chip it up. And by the time you get it done, they whistle for you to, we're moving out. And you go someplace else and dig I just wanted to say, like, that uh, must that take long. I'm not sure you're the same for the rest of your life after you look through it. You never forget them. When a guy got hit in the arm with a piece of scrap, took his arm off above the elbow. And they were taking him out. He said, get my wristwatch off my arm. Oh yeah! We also saw that in the show. You can really see that the ba they based the show on these interviews. It's so well done. Everything in the kitchen sink, motors, earthen walkers, that's a rocket thing, it's a screaming sound. I thought the whole world was shooting at us at once. I jumped into a foxhole that somebody had started and then hadn't finished. So I was crouched down in that foxhole. But uh, it wouldn't know when all of was above the ground. I could see all these shells hitting. Sergeant Garnier lost a leg, Joe Torrey lost a leg in the same place right there on one, on one hill. I remember uh, just yeah. this certain instance. That was fucked up. Not what? What do I have to do to die? He got hit real bad in the back and the leg. And he got there and had a medic and he couldn't, can't find a medic. And I went out to see what I could do for him. Bongo, I got it too. Yeah, he was the guy that was just back there, right? With uh, Babe. He was holding his leg and it was jerking like that. He said, Lip, they got old gone there this time. <laughs> Put him on stretchers and I better not talk about it. I better not talk about it. They're terrible. We had lost some uh, very good men there. Toy and Garnier had lost their legs there. A number of other people were killed. It was uh, a difficult situation there. When a man was wounded, we felt glad for him. We felt happy for him. 
he had a ticket to get out of there and maybe a ticket to go home. And when we had a man who was killed, we found that he was at peace. Oh, and he looked so peaceful. Honestly, that was and constantly he, my thought though. When they were like really badly wounded, I was like, okay, you got a ticket peace. home now. That must be a nice thing, but still you're wounded. And a lot and of them would rather sad. have just kept fighting. I know that. Squad leader. To this day, he says, I haven't got one scratch. He says, I'm afraid when I do get it, I'm really going to get it. And uh, he was right. He got killed. So uh, keep your fingers crossed. And that was it. It's always so like hard when they get emotional. I'm just like, yeah, I get it. After everything you guys went through. Never before has a full division been cited by the War Department in the name of the President for gallantry and action. With that tradition, therefore, will always be associated the name of the 101st Airborne Division and the last dome. Good luck and God be with each of you. Purchase Garden at the end of the line is the retreat that Hitler had for himself and he built his uh, eagle's nest. There was uh, obviously uh, a loot of all kinds that the men were looking for such as uh, guns, there was money that they were Booze. That place was full of this big arch, you know. Rembrandt. The 101st Airborne Division uncovers Herman Goering's personal art collection. Treasures will go back to rightful owners in pillage nations. We found a, a warehouse full of gin and uh, vodka and stuff like that. It wasn't much whiskey. Those people don't like whiskey. And we took it all in a sort of a ball. It didn't taste like it would hurt you. It tastes like ginger ale. That the whole company fell out in their underwear. We didn't even have to dress. You know? <laughs> I had no problem with looting because of the fact that I had come down through Germany and I had seen the Holocaust. And I had seen what the Germans had done to the Jewish race and I'd seen what they had done to uh, the displaced persons and what they had done in their occupation of France and what they had done to their occupation in Holland, Belgium. So that uh, by taking over their homes for a few nights to uh, dead down my men, and uh, if they picked up a few trinkets, I had no problem. I get that at that point. I know there's also a lot of innocent Germans, of course, but I get it. Nobody has ever taken the time to tell you how to handle a surrender. Jeez. We'll talk about that when we get there. Well, here we are. We got it. How did they handle this? I think we thought that the Germans were probably the evilest people in the world, but it was the SS and the special troops. They were the ones that could kill their own people and mm -hmm. the regular German soldier was not that way. Of course, they were doing what they were supposed to do, and I was trying to do what I was supposed to do. Uh, but. Uh, under different circumstances, we might have been good friends. When he walked in, he presented me this pistol and offered his personal surrender. It's so funny that we just literally saw this all. The end of the war for his men, and this is basically the end of the war for my men. And the significance is that I realized this pistol had never been fired. There was no blood on her. And I assure you, this pistol has never, never been fired since I've had it. And it will not be fired. I'm not crying, you are. <laughs> Okay, I'm most excited for this because I really wanted to know what happened after and we only got a few lines of that, so... I think it was difficult for 
most fellas coming back. They didn't know what they were going to do when they got out. I didn't, had no idea. Did some bartending and ran a pool hall, took up a course in ornamental horticulture. Had a pillar tractor company. I became a industrial arts teacher and a social studies teacher. The spring of 46, I took a boat to catch can Alaska. I went to work for the government. I built home. I went into construction. I went into hard work. Tedious work. I'd done everything. Got a job working for Nixon Nitration Works. I was making $75 a week. We've never become wealthy in life, but we have a lot of other wealth that means more than that, really. I mean, the fact that you're still alive and a lot of them are not, I think that's... Yeah. I want to welcome... Oh, we're going to see a reunion! ...to our banquet tonight. We the ending of a fine reunion. I love you. God bless you all. Thank you. It's so cute just to give us a chance to get together and talk to each other. I think that's we important, yeah. We really have farming experiences, but we have great respect and you might say affection for each other. The type of affection that you get when you've lived through many dangerous situations together rely on each other. The man you can't explain. I mean, it must feel like family at that point. The There's an intimacy that develops and uh, like nothing that I've ever experienced anyway, not in college, not, not in any, with any other group of people. To be this close after all these years, that's, that's the thing that gets me. But I love that they did so it's many reunions because we saw already a couple of I'm years and I'm quite sure there must have been a few well, more. Guys, I'm back when I it's so see. nice that they just kept doing that. I'd like to make 20 more reunions. <laughs> My family didn't know anything about it. Figured it's something that, uh, didn't need talking about it. it was done over with we didn't know shifty the way the men mm. know shifty yeah. so but we he started talking about it just in the last five or six years last five i'd say it was like he that was another life you know as he was another person and uh we weren't aware it didn't even dawn on me that he killed people i i really i really admire my dad my daddy <laughs> he's a real strong guy <laughs> We travel a lot and we've been to, to France and to that cemetery. It's just incredible. There's crosses upon crosses upon crosses and they just lined up perfectly as far as the eye can see. And then These weren't just anonymous. These were people that I knew died at age 19 or 20. A whole life. Never lived. No family. When I went there, I said, Dad, my gosh, Dad, you were so lucky. He looked at me and he said, yeah. Very lucky, and he started crying. <laughs> These guys have been with each other in the absolute base experiences of human existence. They were there with each other. Knowing you're gonna die, or thinking you're gonna die, or seeing people dying all around you. I really you didn't expect that we would hear the family talk. Okay. Sergeant Joe Toy, <laughs> 506 PIR, 101st Airborne Division. That's what he went on his tombstone. It meant that much to him. Every army unit thinks it's the best, uh, but we knew we were the best. <laughs> Think about most of them every day. Some of them. Am I a little proud of having once served in that outfit? You bet your life. I wore that eagle on my right shoulder <laughs> for 18 years. Probably the proudest thing of my whole life, having been in Easy Company 506. I think it's always so cute when they wear their medals and stuff like that. Especially like those interviews, I'm like, yes, wear it with pride. The memories of a question my grandson asked me the other day, when he said, Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? Grandpa said, no, but I served in a company of heroes. That is. Oh, damn. And we used to have a few beers. Oh, there's more. Garnier could sing it better than he did. Bridges of wind, where have you been? 
Sure, it's a fine time for you to come here. <laughs> Musical you star. To see the show, the temporary <laughs> never took. It's so funny that they still show this after. Oh, that's what we say. Two beers, you were drunk because you were in great physical condition. Two beers, you were high as Georgia Pine. You know. I'm drunk after two beers, so I feel that. <laughs> okay. I honestly feel like we got a lot of new information, but at the same time, not at all. If you know what I mean. As in almost everything they told, we saw that in the show. And now you really see how much this show was inspired by their stories. Like, we already kind of knew that because we saw the stories in the beginning every time. But they talked about so many things that we literally saw happening in the show. And I think it's so well done. Like, I already had mad respect for the show because... I saw how much work and effort was in there, the way they were trying to tell that, the way they tried to stick so close to reality. But seeing these interviews and seeing how close they stuck to those interviews, it only makes me respect this show more. Like, the amount of work that must have been in this show, I... Like, I'm not sure how long exactly, but they must have spent years on making this like first you have to find all these men then you have to like do the interviews then you have to like base everything on that write the script find the right actors like i mean i know how much work it takes to make a film because i made a short film that already took me like half year to like fully produce of course i didn't have a big budget then it of course takes a little longer because you have to do everything yourself but just thinking about how much work would be in a show like this then like I also had to make a documentary once. Just finding the right person is already so hard. And of course they just like look at who was in this division. But still, just the idea behind all of that, like it, it must be so much work. And they did it so well and it... I really think this show deserves all the praise it gets at this point. Because like I said before, the first two or three episodes I had kind of a hard time getting into this show. I think that was mostly because I had a really hard time recognizing all the men who was who, um, like getting kind of a connection to it. Maybe also a little bit understanding the story. But from episode four, it was just like, I started to recognize them more. Um, I think they started to focus more on one person, which made it really interesting. And then I already like, I really respected this show and then now after seeing this, I'm just like, wow, it's a it's really good show. It's so respectfully done for like these men, like what they all went through and also I was thinking sometimes like their family must have seen this show as well. I just sometimes really wonder what would they think about that, like your family members being played by this actor going through all this really hard circumstances i think that that i don't know I, I think for some reason it would be really cool to see that to like see what your dad or granddad or whatever went through but also like really harsh because you heard a lot of them saying that they didn't really talk about it i feel like it's really a thing they kept for the reunions that they mostly talked about it with each other and not really the families um so also maybe something you wouldn't really expect or something I don't know, it's just so weird to think about. And also to think about that all these men are dead right now is so emotional to me. Um, I remember two weeks ago when I edited the last episode, I looked up um, when the last person died or if there was anyone still alive. Um, I think the last person died a year ago. And literally when I read that, I cried so hard. And I don't know why, but I was just... Reading it like, I believe he died in December 2021. I'm not sure if I'm completely correct right now, but I think I read that. Um, and just the idea that they're all gone now, it just really hit me. Like, of course, they're old. Like, I get it. People die. But still, just the idea that this is something that happened and that there's not really anyone left now to tell this story. That also makes it so much cooler that this is out there, this show, this documentary, that they got this story from them. It's just so nice and I think it's, it, it shows so much respect to them, how they like handled the whole story and that. And what I really liked was that we saw some of the family members talking because we didn't see any of that in the, um, in the show. 
They also didn't really show them talking about life after. They only showed us some lines like uh, he went to do that and he went to do that and that happened, you know. And now to hear them talking about that stuff and actually seeing a reunion and stuff, I really like that. I think that was my favorite part of this documentary. Because like I said, all the information before, we already kind of knew it. It was really interesting to hear them talk about it. It felt less depressing, like I said, because... I mean, of course, for them, this is so long ago. And of course, it's something that always sticks with you. But they've had a lot of reunions. They've talked this through and through, probably. Um, and they kept some great friendships, like almost family from it. So for them, it's so different, I think, to talk about it after all these years. And to look back at it, than for us to like hear this for the first time and be like, what the fuck? That is so crazy and depressing and... Yeah, just the way they told it, it kind of lifted me up or something, even though they were talking about these gruesome things, you know. I think that was all I had to say about this documentary. I'm really glad I watched it, though. So thank you to all my patrons who recommended it to me. It was so interesting and, like I said, it just gave me more respect for this show, so... It was really nice to see. Um, I think now I'm really adding my Band of Brothers reactions though. Like last time I thought it was already done and I had no idea this was out there. Um, but now it's really time. <laughs> Before I end this reaction, I want to tell you that um, if you have like a video, um, a TV show episode, a movie, whatever, and you want me to react to it, there is tears on my Patreon that make it possible for me to react to it. If you're interested in that and you like really want to support me and you like really want to do that, then you can check out my Patreon, see the options. Um, I would gladly react to more. And yeah, then I think this was my reaction. I feel like I want to say so much more about this because this was so beautiful. And now I'm sad again that I'm ending this show right now. I feel like I've already had this closure and I have to do this closure again, but I guess that was it. Of course, let me know what you thought of this. Um, and if you like my reaction, then please leave a like, subscribe. And then I really hope to see you at some of my other reactions. Bye.